Hey guys, so I'm not having the best day. So roughly two days ago, I was actually filming a video with Fletch. I wasn't writing him or anything like that. Towards the end of filming that day, I just noticed that he was like throwing his head a little bit and it was really tough because if any of you guys have followed us for a while, you'll know that he is a sensitive horse and in general flies do really irritate him like much more than other horses I've owned before. That's why even in summer when it's really hot, he'll wear like one of those fly mesh rugs um, and it's not uh, to keep him clean or anything like that. It's purely just to keep the insects off him because he finds them really annoying. And honestly, the day we filmed was like the first hot day that we've had. So it's just turned summer here and it was really warm that day and really sticky and it was like the first day I've really noticed the flies out so I was kind of like oh it seems a bit weird but like I don't know the flies are out and I sort of brushed it off because I was like I think he's just excited because you know we were running around the arena and he was having a little canter just like I literally just put it down to the fact that the flies were out and he was getting a little bit excited and I'm like that's all it is and then the very next day I actually came down in the afternoon to come and ride him and again it was quite a warm day and when I went to get Fletch out of the paddock, he was acting really odd and he was throwing his head a lot. And I was like, there's no flies bothering him. Like this just seems really weird. So I called the vet straight away. Um, that was last night. So she came out first thing this morning. And what was weird is he wasn't as bad first thing this morning when it was still cool. Like so she came quite early. And then by the time I'd walked him through the arena again, it got really bad again. And so when she got here, I explained what's been happening. And the minute I said to her, I'm like, I know this sounds really weird, but it seems like it's worse in the sun or like when he gets warm. And I hadn't even finished my sentence and I already saw her face change and I was like, like fire out, what? Please just tell me what is it? Um, but basically, yeah, he's been diagnosed as having head shaking syndrome. So yeah, that was pretty upsetting. The vet did say because we have caught it so early this is the best possible chance for him to get over it. When I watched the first half of this video back, I realized that I did try and explain what head shaking was for those who didn't know. And because I was like emotional, the description did not make any sense at all. So I'm gonna do my best to try and explain exactly what it is. So from my understanding, head shaking syndrome, it's a bit of a catch all term because there's quite a few things that might cause that behavior if that makes sense that basically describes a horse that you will see throwing their head up and down in a very I guess involuntary way you know obviously you see a horse throw its head in excitement and all because something's irritating it and that's like a normal behavior but when you see this it's really unnatural it's quite like up and down and it can look quite violent sometimes so as well as the head shaking you often see them snorting a lot which you can obviously hear Fletch even though he's not head shaking right now he's snorting um, and they'll also try and rub their nose. So for him, what's causing this behavior is inflammation of his trigeminal nerve. That is one of the nerves that runs down the horse's face. The classic symptom of the trigeminal nerve being the issue is to be um, sun sensitive, which he is extremely. The problem is, is that the source of the inflammation and what initially triggered that is literally so hard to determine and that's where it's really, really frustrating. Um, so you can figure out how to manage this and sometimes it's seasonal, sometimes it comes and then it will just go away. It's one of those things that's all a little bit of a mystery. There's no set treatment that you use just like the cure-all for every single horse. It really comes down to just trying a whole bunch of stuff and trying to figure out what will work. The vet did say she's had success with hitting this really hard when it first comes up to try and sort of break the cycle. So she did see it as a positive that I'd actually caught it so early. So she said that's given us the best possible chance um, for Fletch to kind of like nip this in the bud and like just stop it. Just trying really hard now for a week to try and um, basically shut it down. So. But that involved him getting a cortisone shot today and I had to put a fly mask straight on him, one of the ones that covers their nose. Fly spray, just do everything possible to stop anything touching his face. He can't be in a paddock with too long grass because the grass will irritate his face and he needs to be in the shade. So luckily the paddock he is in currently is absolutely perfect for that. It's really shady, it's full of trees um, and the grass isn't tall at all. It's still good grass, but there's no like lawn stalks or anything that are gonna irritate his face. So I did just get back from Horseland um, and as you can see, Fletcher's sporting very attractive new fly mask. 
Um, I did put on obviously one straight away after I had the vet out this morning, but it was a mesh one and I feel like the mesh was kind of irritating him more than it was providing comfort. Um, so I specifically went out so I could get one that was more of like a cotton nose flap. This one's a cool coat one and so far so good. The minute I put it on, he seemed a little bit more comfortable. Um, so I think that was a good option to get. Um, what else I got from Horseland was I got some Vet Sense uh, fly spray that I can just put on his nose just to try and keep absolutely all the flies and stuff off of him. Um, and then I also bought another mesh rug. A bit of hay. Um, so this is the same I think as the other one I've got. It's the Comfy Tech Airflow Combo just in like a different colour. I kid you not, so many of these were sold out. I ended up having to get a 6.6 six, which I usually put Fletch in a 6.4 or a 6.3 so it's going to be too big but I thought that that was a better option than going too small. So I'm going to chuck that on him now and spray his face and then he'll go back in the paddock. As well, this is just poor Fletch. I feel so upset for him. Poor boy. So if you do ever need to put fly spray on your horse, a really good way to do it is to get like a cloth and just spray it onto the cloth and just wipe it on. Um, I find if it's anywhere near their face, it's better to do that um, just in case you get it in their eyes or something like that, and then they can be really wary of it next time you try and use the spray, which is fair enough. So I'm just gonna spray. I'm just gonna pretty much soak that. It's just a lot more, like, less drama if you apply it this way. So I'm taking Fletch back to the paddock now. Um, so basically he's having about three days off where we're just going to keep him uh, covered up. And he's been treated with cortisone, so in a couple of days' time we'll know if that stuff has worked. Um, if we see a change in his behaviour. So I'll be getting the vet out again in a couple of days and she's going to reassess. Hello guys, it has now been roughly two weeks since I filmed the first part of this video. So I thought I'd better jump in and provide an update. I was obviously feeling pretty upset and pretty frustrated in the first part of this video. And now with like time gone, I'm kind of just into like solution mode at the moment. So I am feeling like a little bit more positive about everything. The vet did say that for most horses that get this, figuring out what that initial trigger was, um, is like near impossible. Um, it's super rare that you will actually be able to figure out what it is and that is so <laughs> freaking frustrating to me because I always want to just know what it is and I will just fix it and it's just not that simple in this case. So I am going to go and grab the little patient now. He's going to get a groom and then I'm going to give you guys a bit of an update on where we're at with everything. So here he is guys, the poor pine. So treatment wise, the first thing the vet tried was cortisone. If that was going to make an effect then we were going to do another round of that three days after the initial um, injection. We tried antihistamines, they had absolutely no effect, same as the cortisone. Uh, the vet came back out, we did an x-ray of Fletcher's jaw and of his sinuses just to rule out um, that nothing was going on in there and the vet was literally like his teeth are perfect, he has a really good mouth, his sinuses <laughs> look completely normal, like there was absolutely nothing that was like a red flag to her at all or even like suspicious that maybe it could have caused this. So again that was really frustrating because some of you would know he did actually have a wolf tooth removed about two months ago and so I was thinking maybe something's happened with that and, and maybe that's causing it somehow. 
um, but that was completely ruled out. Everything looked perfect. We were going to do a nasal scope, but the x-rays essentially ruled out any issues going on in there, so the vet didn't recommend it. So at this point, I'm just focusing on managing keeping the sun off his face and keeping him protected because that keeps him comfortable and happy. Um, and then in the meantime, we're just literally going to keep working through potential solutions to stop it completely. The next couple of steps I want to take is number one, getting some blood tests done just to rule out just that there could be anything going on with that. From there, there's a million options. So there's changing paddock. Obviously, there's more drastic things too, like moving him off the property completely um, and seeing if that makes a difference. There are certain drugs available, but honestly, like the rates of success with them is really poor. And some of the ones I've researched into have really bad side effects um, so bad that in some cases you're not going to be able to actually ride your horse so obviously that would just be for extreme cases um, so I'm not going to go down that road just yet um, and the vet hasn't recommended going down that road either like I can't even explain like once you start googling this condition there's literally a million and one things to try and like no one person seems to say the same thing works for their horse like I can't find any consistent answers it's really just about like managing it and then just keep trying things and seeing if it will stop. Potentially this is just going to be a seasonal thing as well um, but you literally can't predict it so like when autumn rolls around he might actually just stop this behavior on his own with no other changes um, but obviously we don't know if that's going to be the case or not. When Fletch doesn't have much riding he becomes like a racehorse again. It's true Fletch you do. The weather here has been really really bad like it's been super hot but like raining so it's been really difficult trying to work out what to do with the horse's rugs so for Fletch, we actually took his rugs off, so he's been naky naky for the last two days and it's been sort of raining and a bit gross, um, but really hot still, so it's just been really, really bleh. And what he's managed to do is like completely scruff up his coat. He's covered in this like fine layer of dust. I can't even explain what he's done to his tail. He's obviously decided to rub it on something and it's gone full like prickle bush. And he never usually rubs his tail, so... I don't know what inspired him to do that and obviously he managed to lay down on some ants I think because he's ended up with a few little bites you can see poor little flange he's in the wars just a few little bumps there he's also got little saliva marks all over him so he's obviously been trying to itch them and of course he's managed to get this cut up here on his back I'm not sure how he managed to do that hmm, that must have been a very creative way to hurt yourself and also down here on this leg, I don't know if it's related to the back, but he's managed to scratch just the inside of his leg. So that's, that's great. <laughs> Another reason why I don't usually give Flesh time off, because every time I do, he literally manages to hurt himself in some way. Like every time, without fail, he will do something. So basically I'm just going to clean him up and we're going to get some rugs on him again because the weather is going to turn and it's going to be cold, so he's just going to need a little bit extra tonight. So I've cleaned these little cuts up and it's nothing serious so I'm literally just gonna spray it with some cetrogen which is really good stuff when it's in like awkward spots like that so I'm just gonna shake it up quickly and I'm just gonna put this on just to keep it so I'm just gonna put this on good boy just to keep it protected and it's essentially like an antibacterial spray but it also acts as a bit of a barrier, especially the flies and things like that. So it's really good. If you ever need something for summer, this stuff is really, really good. Sorry, Fletch, I'm just gonna spray a little bit there too. Fletch is not a big fan of the aerosol, <laughs> as you can tell. Now I have to fix this tail. They had won their freedom at last. 
the vet did recommend to continue riding him through this, um, but obviously I need to alter how I do that. So that means either riding super early in the morning or super late at night. So when there's no sunlight um, until we can bring the head shaking levels down because at the moment if I do try and ride him in the sun it's just going to be too much for him. So yeah obviously that's disappointing and it's frustrating but at the end of the day as long as he's happy in himself then that's all I can really ask. Obviously I can't tell the future so I have no idea with how this is going to end up and how good or bad it's going to get um, but at this point I'm, I'm just pulling back and we're just going to be riding at home and keeping things pretty chill. Obviously Fletch is my number one and Fletch, he will have a forever home with me no matter how useless he gets <laughs> with this head shaking. Yes. So the Fletch will 100% not go anywhere. I'm just going to give Fletch like a little lunge and just see how he goes. I might end up leaving the mask on um, but he's got so much excess energy right now it's crazy and I think it would actually be good for him to just get a little bit of it out right now. Um, it's pretty late in the afternoon now so I feel like it's probably the best time to try because the sun has essentially gone down behind the clouds now and it's not very strong so I was like I think it's our best possible chance to try and get a little bit of this energy out while he's still comfortable. So I am about to go and try and lunge this one. So far so good the sun's really gone down so I think we're going to be okay because the shaking stopped even though he's not wearing his hood so I've given him essentially two weeks off which is why he's being so not himself and why he seems to have so much energy.